a director of psychology named Dr. Fisher, he adjusts his picture frame and nervously moves around his office. He takes a sit and writes his will. But shortly after, he goes out of the building and commits suicide by jumping off the building's roof. In another scene, we see an up-and-coming social psychologist Dr. James, driving to a state penitentiary. He is on his way to interrogate a notorious serial killer and death row inmate named Edward. James meets with Warden Moss and reveals that he was brought in to fill in for Dr. Fisher who committed suicide at the start of the movie and was the serial killer's regular visitor for this procedure. Edward is scheduled to die via electrocution at his insistence that very day and Moss explains to James that Edward's fate depends upon James's diagnosis. If James deduces that Edward is sane, he will be executed but if he is declared insane via multi-personality disorder as Stewart had believed, Edward will be spared. James meets the convicted serial killer, Edward, who appears extremely self-confident and sure of things, knowing so much information about James such as the school he graduated, the name of his girlfriend, the death of his father, and so on. All this leaving him at a loss of words for an introduction. When James takes a seat to interrogate Edward, the inmate refuses to be referred to as a human and instead a demon inhabiting Edward's body named Nefarious, a name Satan gave him, Nefarious, for short. James does not believe Nefarious is who he says he is and thinks instead that it is an act by Edward to seem insane, however he is surprised when Nefarious insists that he wants to be executed, or rather, that he wants Edward to be executed. Nefarious also explains that before the day is over, James will commit three murders. James, an atheist box at this idea which annoys Nefarious who calls him a pompous sack of meat, in believing that he is safe only because he thinks such things such as demonic possession don't exist. James plays along, asking Nefarious how he came to inhabit Edward. Nefarious explains that he began tempting Edward from a young age to commit small sins before communicating with him through a Ouija board Edward received for Christmas. Nefarious possessed Edward's body only after Edward consented to the possession multiple times. James brings in a chaplain stating that that he is not an expert on religious matter to confront the demon in Edward, which frightens Nefarious, until he realizes that the priest does not believe in demons and therefore has no effect on him. James gives Nefarious a proposition that since he believes he is a demon, he should possess him and in turn he wants to talk to Edward, the host who Nefarious has possessed. It seems that Nefarious could not possess James, or so it seemed. Nefarious then holds up to his bargain and switches a timid, childlike Edward who is terribly distraught and shaken by his possession. Edward insists that he is possessed and that the demon had murdered multiple people using his innocent body as a vessel. When James begins probing further, Nefarious takes control and insists that James murdered his mother. Shocked that Nefarious knows this, James insists that his mother was dying of a terminal illness and was euthanized after a difficult decision on his behalf. When Nefarious infers that James gave her a painless death to acquire her massive wealth, James becomes suddenly angry and threatens to leave the meeting but changes his mind. Nefarious explains he is mentally training James for an endeavor he wants James to do, and that he mentally tortured Dr. Fisher, driving him to take his own life so as to select James for this job. When James continues to be doubtful of Nefarious and want to leave, the demon explains that James would have committed the second murders before the end of the day. Giving further details, that he knows James's girlfriend is pregnant, and that because of James's threats to break up with her to avoid fatherhood, she is terminating her pregnancy. Nefarious explains that James can save his son with a simple phone call within the limited amount of time but James refuses, thinking Nefarious is bluffing while also insisting that such a thing is his girlfriend's choice to make. However, overcome with curiosity, James leaves the room and instantly approaches prison guard for access to a phone, which he uses to call the women's health clinic. Upon calling he realizes his girlfriend has just finished with the abortion. James is deep in thoughts as the warden approaches him, telling him that he should not allow the prisoner into his mind, convincing James that it's best he signs and approve Edward's death sentence, but James is skeptical. A prison orderly asks Edward what he wants for a final meal before execution to which Edward gives specific directions for a simple burger, fries, and milkshake, only for Nefarious to assume control and tell the orderly to retract the order. James, now interested in what Nefarious has to tell him. Nefarious explains the war in heaven from his point of view, saying that the demons rebelled in order to avoid an eternity of slavery, and that they have been prospering in the world. He also explains that he chose the death by electric chair because it was the most excruciating and painful death available and would be a parting gift before Edward's soul goes to hell for an eternity of more torment. James insists that the world is reclaiming the moral high ground by allowing all kinds of rights and freedoms, which Nefarious laughs at before revealing to him the truth about such freedoms. 
including a decline in education and an influx of slavery and trafficking the demons help the elite manage behind closed doors. James begins pitying Edward slash Nefarious, and almost writes him off as insane to which Nefarious tells him to redact. James is genuinely confused as to which Nefarious is, until Edward breaks through, begging James to help him. However, before he can tell James how to help him, Nefarious takes control again and punishes Edward by breaking one of his fingers before resetting it at James's insistence. Nefarious then explains the endeavor he wants James to do for him is to write a book called The Dark Gospel, which is his satanic equivalent to the Bible and will begin another world religion, this one in servitude to demons. Nefarious then lets James in on a closely guarded secret, that more people are currently going to hell than to heaven. James is called away by Warden Moss who reveals to him that upon searching Edward's prison cell, they found a large documentation of James's life as Nefarious had done with all his other victims, as well as the dark gospel which Edward wrote, crediting it to James's name. Moss encourages James to condemn Edward, insisting that if he is spared, he will probably go after James. James, believing Edward is faking split personalities, confronts Nefarious about this. Nefarious breaks his hand to slip free of one of the cuffs and seizes James, threatening to break his neck unless James begs him for life. Overcome with terror, James begs Nefarious to spare him to which Nefarious complies before being beaten down by the prison guards. In the heat of the moment, James dictates that Edward is sane, but not before being warned by a triumphant Nefarious that he is condemning Edward to death. Edward's head is shaved and he is led to the electric chair. As James uneasily sits with the families of Nefarious victims to witness the execution, he is complimented by the detective who spent six years pursuing Edward before capturing him. However, James is unsure of whether he made the right decision, remembering the three murders, Nefarious told him he would commit which he surmises was his mother, his son, and now Edward. Before the execution, Edward pleads with James to tell the truth about the demonic possession, but James is unsure what to believe and realizes he is too far ahead to do anything now. Before the switch is pulled, Nefarious takes control of Edward's body for a final time, asking if James accepts his offer, to which James silently refuses. Disappointed, Nefarious quotes, Mean tekel a parson, meaning, You have been measured in the scale and found wanting, before leaving Edward's body, causing Edward to suffer an extremely painful and terrible death in the chair. The demon then tells James, You should have accepted my offer, before possessing him. James, under nefarious influence grabs the detective's gun and holds the witnesses at gunpoint. James then realizes that the three murders he would commit that day were instead of his son, Edward, and now himself. Nefarious forces James to commit suicide but James inadvertently counteracts this by praying to God for help, causing the gun to jam. Nefarious lets go of James as he faints into the arms of the security. One year later, a visibly changed James is shown promoting Nefarious' book not as a dark gospel, but as a rewritten cautionary tale for people to read and realize the demonic influence in society. Despite insisting he is still an atheist, he reveals he has undergone many changes. On his way home, James sees a homeless woman rummaging through a dumpster. He gives her some money, and she takes it before saying, Hello James, in Nefarious voice, implying that she is Nefarious' new host. The screen cuts to black with Nefarious' hideous laughter overheard. The end. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment on your thoughts about this movie. See you next time.